I would like to share is that recently I was asked to be interviewed for a half hour long Texas Nafas television show oh, yeah. here in Texas. And uh, you, you've done that? Uh -huh. Oh, cool. Um, so I, I'm just going to read to you two poems that were chosen for reading at this thing. This first one is called Fantastic Car Crash. And our life is one big road trip now, and we set the cruise control and make our way down the expressway. And most of the time, we're just moving the straight line, and the scenery blurs. There's nothing to see. But I know it's inside of you, and I know what you're made of. There's no such thing as a calm with you. You are a fantastic car crash. You stop traffic in both directions as the gapers gawk and the delay grows while everyone slows down to stare. Everything shatters with you, you know. It's a spectacular explosion. I try to duck and cover as metal flies through the air. And every time you leave the scene of an accident, I'm left picking up the shards of glass from the windows. You know, the glass breaks into such tiny little pieces. They look like ice. It takes so long to pick up the pieces. And even though I'm careful, I'm still picking up the pieces and I'm still on my knees. And the glass cuts into my hands and the blood drips down to the street. I think of it as my contribution to this fantastic car crash that is you, that is me, that is us. As I pull the glass from my hands and wave my hand in the line of traffic, go on, keep driving. This happens all the time. There's nothing to see here. <laughs> like less than a week. And it was about, a the poem was about a relationship. But I was referring to somebody who would always be in car crashes. And less than a week later, I was a passenger stopped in an intersection, hit by multiple cars, and I was in a coma for 11 days. Like, like a week after I wrote that, my, my sister put up a journal because I wasn't conscious for anybody who wanted to come by to write something. And he wrote something the first entry goes, you just wrote a poem about a fantastic car crash. This is supposed to be me, which is, it, it wasn't supposed to be a real, you know, you walk away and everything's fine, go on, yeah. this happens all the time, you know, like thinking fender benders or whatever, but it was just a weird coincidence. It had, one had nothing to do with the other. It's just that they were so close to each other. It was freaky. And uh, this next one that I'm gonna share with you, is an edited version of a poem called Everything Was Alive and Dying. And I share this because January 1st was my 25 year anniversary of being a vegetarian. So it's fun to be able to talk about that and read this poem and hear somebody claps. Uh, this is the studio recording of Everything Was Alive and Dying. I had a dream the other night. I walked out of a city to a forest and there were neatly paved bicycle paths and trash cans every 50 feet and trash every 10. And as I walked, there was a stray cat. She still had her little neon collar on with a little bell. And she walked a few feet and she stretched her front paws. <laughs> oh, she looked so incredibly darling. And then she walked right up to me and she said, thank you. And I said, for what? And, and she just looked at me for a second. Her, her little ears were standing straight up. And she said, in some countries, I'm considered a delicacy. <laughs> And I said, how do you know of these things? And she said, when somebody eats one of you, word gets around. <laughs> uh, and then she just looked at me for a second and she said, and in some countries the cow is sacred. Wouldn't they love to see how you humans prepare them for slaughter, how you hang them upside down and slit their throats so they're still beating hearts, will drain out all the blood for you. She said, isn't it funny how arbitrary your decision to eat meat is? And I said, D -d -d don't, don't put me in that category. I don't eat meat. And she said, I know. And then I woke up in a sweat. So, so tell me, Ted, Canadian, Cuban, Cruz. So tell me, Nancy, my eyes are pried open, Pelosi. So tell me, Mitch, the slowest turtle, McConnell. So tell me, crooked Hillary Clinton. So tell me, entertainer in chief, Donald Trump. So tell me, Barack Hussein Obama. 
If you woke up from that dream, would you be in a sweat too? I mean, because everything is linked here. We destroy our animals so we can be wasteful and violent. We destroy our plants, we destroy our earth, we're even destroying our air. We wreak havoc on the soil, on the atmosphere. We dump our wastes into our lakes, we pump aerosol cans and exhaust pipes. And you think I'm extreme? And I'm beginning to think that we just keep doing it because we don't know how to stop. And deep inside we feel the pain of all that we've killed and we try to control it by popping a chemical-filled painkiller. And we live through the guilt by taking caffeine, nicotine, morphine, and we keep ourselves thin with saccharin, and we keep ourselves sane with our alcohol poisoning. And the thing is, in the wild, you have no power over anyone else. But now that we're civilized, we create our own wild. Maybe when we have all this power, the only choice we have is to destroy ourselves. And so we do. Thank you.